hello guys and welcome to my channel today we'll be talking about the menstrual cycle good and this is very important because this is the basis of our fertility without the menstrual cycle we won't reproduce a lot of people also want to go about um, their family planning method by using the calendar method that is a good trick they scrolling through their calendar and be to be able to tell when it is safe to have unprotected sex and when it is unsafe so basically we will discuss the menstrual cycle i'm hoping that by the end of this um, you would understand the menstrual cycle please if you have not subscribed yet subscribe and share and like this is not most heavy you are welcome so going to the menstrual cycle we'll first of all talk about the three main organs that are involved or that makes the menstrual cycle happen and so we talk about the brain the ovary and the uterus it is worth knowing that the menstrual cycle is controlled by a neurohormonal process so basically the certain hormones when they drop in your system for instance the estrogen when estrogen drops signals are sent back to the brain that the estrogen levels have dropped we are about to start a new cycle so please um, release follicle stimulating hormone so that it will come and ensure that we have enough estrogen now we will understand this as we go further in the discussion so we've mentioned the brain the ovary and the uterus please look out for how these three organs interplay in the menstrual cycle so the menstrual cycle that we are using now is that of a 28 day old woman so like most women have a 28 day cycle it means that at the end of every 28 days they would menstruate so that's what we are using for simplicity even though some women or most women do not have a 28 day cycle but for simplicity we are going to use the 28 day cycle so basically this midline that you see is like the halfway between the 28 day cycle and that is when ovulation occurs so before we get it let's 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 just understand what is going on here so it all starts with this guy the hypothalamus the hypothalamus is a session in the brain right if you if you remember your central nervous system you realize that there's a place called hypothalamus in the brain now hypothalamus will send a signal to the anterior pituitary gland which is also part of the brain the pituitary gland is known to release hormones several hormones like a factory for hormone release and so the anterior part that is the front part would be signaled by the hypothalamus to release this hormone called follicle stimulating hormone popularly known as fsh now just listen to the name follicle stimulating hormone it means that this hormone is going to stimulate a follicle good now we are going to the next part which is the ovary this follicle stimulating hormone is going to go into the ovaries and then stimulate several follicles in the ovaries to start growing so out of the lot about 15 to 20 that will be stimulated to grow one will outgrow the others and the one that outgrows the others is the one that will finally release the fertilized ovum now these follicles are called the graphene follicle so as we can see the dominant graphene follicle that is going ahead to go and release the, the the ovum is what has been drawn here so follicle stimulated comes a hormone comes in and starts stimulating this graphene follicle to grow so you can see starting from small growing 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 until it gets to the 14 days where it has fully matured the, the ruptures so brain releases follicle stimulating hormones it activates the ovaries to start growing several follicles one follicle will outgrow the other and that follicle will be the one to release the mature ovum. great now let's look at what is going on here so you see estrogen progesterone you see estrogen higher progesterone lower what does it mean the graphene follicle as it is growing under the uh, influence of the follicle stimulating hormone also releases estrogen and progesterone so these follicles that you see that is growing, apart from the fact that it is growing and maturing to release the ovum or the egg, it is also releasing estrogen and progesterone. So it has, because the estrogen is higher, it's tell, telling us that estrogen is produced more than the progesterone. Now what's the importance of this estrogen that is being produced? 
that is where we come into the uterus brain ovaries uterus now this estrogen that is being produced by the graphia follicle is what is going to stimulate the regeneration or the regrowth of the lining that you shed off here so let's let's just pay a little attention here so you see day one and day five and you see this line here good this is when the average days for shedding a menstrual flow so most women will have a range of one to five days for them to shed off their menses or to menstruate this is when they are shedding off the lining that was formed the previous months expecting it to like sustain a baby but it didn't work fertilization didn't take place and so from the first to the fifth day of your menstrual cycle you are shedding and that one to five days is known as the menstrual phase now after you have shed that lining off it needs to be replaced that is where the estrogen comes in now mind you because the graphium follicle is the one producing the estrogen the more it grows the more estrogen is produced so on the first day of your menstrual cycle when the graphium follicle starts growing in your ovaries it starts producing estrogen small 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 so by the time you finish shedding or menstruating that time you have enough estrogen in your system to go into your uterus and stimulate the regrowth of the lining that was shed off so that's why we call this a uh, part part from the fifth to the fourth day we call it regenerative phase so the first to the fifth day in your uterus is shedding of the menstrual lining of the previous month and then from the fifth day to the 14th day is the regeneration of the lining that was shed off under the influence of estrogen predominantly good so brain releases follicle stimulating hormone graphium follicle uh, grows under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone and then as the graphium follicle is growing it's releasing, releasing estrogen and progesterone and then estrogen and progesterone is now going into the uterus to stimulate the regrowth of the lining that you shed off in the first uh, five days of the menstrual cycle so in the menstrual phase or in the uterine, uterus we have the menstrual phase with the shedding the regenerative phase in some books is called the proliferative phase which is the regrowth of the line that was shed off now let's focus on this next section the 14th day which is usually the ovulation day what happens here basically ovulation happens and that is the rapture of these graphium follicles to release the matured egg how does it happen we know that follicle stimulating hormone is like a boss here controlling everything that moves from up to down in the middle portion ovulation is happening the follicle stimulation stimulating hormone alone cannot initiate um, ovulation it can help the graphium follicle grow and mature but when it comes to the release of the egg you need this guy utilizing hormone to come in so at the midline or the 14th day you have a surge of utilizing hormone coming in to help the follicle stimulating hormone ensure that there is a rupture to release the egg and also another hormone called relaxing also comes in to soften the membranes of the graphium for so that it can rupture and release the egg so at this midpoint you have follicle stimulating still uh, in, in, in the system and then a surge of utilizing hormone coming in to help follicle stimulating hormone the relaxing also coming in and then the, the, the graphium follicle ratchets to release the egg so we are done with the first 14 days moving on to the second half of the second 14 days now you see this graphium follicle that's ratchet the egg is out and it's supposed to go and find a sperm to fertilize it what happens to the shell of the graphium follicle it becomes known as the corpus luteum corpus luteum now the corpus luteum takes over from the graphium follicle in terms of hormone production. Now, the luteinizing hormone, which came in to help the follicle stimulating hormone to rupture uh, the graphium follicle and release the egg, now starts influencing the corpus luteum to produce progesterone and estrogen. Now, look at it. You see that estrogen was produced more here, the progesterone was less in production. Here, the corpus luteum produces more progesterone 
than estrogen. Great. So why do we need more progesterone at the second half than we need estrogen? The estrogen was meant to regrow the lining. The lining has been regrown nicely. Now that uh, we have ovulated, the egg is out. We are expecting that it will go and get itself the sperm and fertilize. The responsibility of progesterone here is to ensure that this lining that was regrown or regenerated is adequately prepared to sustain pregnancy. So progesterone is going to ensure that the lining that was regenerated becomes an efficient um, lining that is ready to sustain and support the fertilized ovum. So what it does is it ensures that there is more blood supply here it ensures that um, uh, minerals and glycogen are deposited there and then this whole place becomes edematous all in preparation for a fertilized ovum. So progesterone is the guy that ensures that this lining is more efficient in sustaining pregnancy. So this will go on in the uterus under the influence of progesterone and that phase of the menstrual cycle is known as the secretory phase the secretory phase now on the 26th day it becomes obvious that pregnancy begins to occur and so everything that we've been worrying our head over preparing this preparing that will not be needed again so in that case everything will stop and all these preparation start dying off so on the 28th day, everything that has died off will now have to shed off through menstrual flow. So on the 28th day, you see blood bleeding. Your menstruation has started. So the day you see that blood, it is the first day of your menstrual cycle. So another cycle would continue. So basically, we have what happens in the brain, which influences what happens in the ovary, which also influences what happens in the uterus. So we have the for the for the ovaries we have the follicular phase and then the luteal phase. So the follicular phase is when the follicles are growing under the influence of the follicle stimulating hormone, and then the luteal phase is when corpus luteum is in action, producing progesterone and estrogen under the influence of the luteinizing hormone. And when you come to the uterus. You have the menstrual phase where you are shedding blood one to five days and after you shed there is the regenerative phase the regrowth of the, uh, the lining that you shed off and then we have the ovulation phase which is like the midpoint and then the secretory phase that is post ovulation we are expecting that fertilization will take place and for that reason we are preparing the uterus making it extra conducive to support pregnancy and so we have the secretory phase and at the tail end of the secretory phase, secretory phase we have the ischemic phase which is part of the secretory phase which basically is the termination of everything that happens in the secretory phase to allow the new cycle to come so basically that is that for the menstrual cycle i hope it made sense and that uh, you could make sense out of it and it made it a little bit simpler Please share feedback, comment, like, and subscribe, and then share with your friends. Thanks, friends.